This dream, some of you probably heard me talk about it if you heard any of the live stream messages where I've been, but this dream that was sent to me a few months ago about feeding the river. Fascinating dream, very simple, very short. It wasn't a Gina dream, it wasn't a Greg Hood dream. This was like a beginner dream. <laughs> you could read this one in a minute instead of 30 minutes. I love, I love the detailed dreams. They know that. But this was a simple one. <clears throat> In fact, I've never known of this guy having a dream. But I knew when he sent it to me, it was, this is, this is, this is from the Lord. But I didn't know what it meant, but I knew it was from the Lord. So he said, you know, uh, two of my friends and CC and I were all together on the bank of a river and we were going to hold a meeting there, service there. But it wasn't time to start yet, so we were just kind of relaxing. And they came to me, and they said, Dutch, it's time for you to feed the river. Well, I'd never heard that phrase before. Get in the river, yes. Drink from the river, yeah. Cross over the river. I mean, I'd never heard the phrase, feed the river. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, in the dream, they walked off. Cece and I sat down, and I didn't do anything. So, a few minutes later, they came back to me, and they had gathered up a bunch of buckets. And they handed me the buckets, and they said, Dutch, it's time now to feed the river. So, I took the buckets, and I waded out into the river. Isn't that interesting? I thought, I thought Lord, I had to get in it to do this. I, I didn't do it from the bank. I went into the river. And I started walking down the river, and every once in a while, just drop a bucket. Never was told in the dream what was in the bucket. Just drop a bucket in the river. Walk a little farther, put another one in. It was a long, I went a long way down the river. I passed these little gatherings, campgrounds, thing, places where people were, and, and they were fishing. And they would see me. They knew who I was. And, and they would shout at me and say, Hey, Dutch, thanks for feeding the river, man. We're going to catch some big ones now. And I just kept going. And came to a point where I knew it was a place. To, uh, it was the place to stop, and went back to them, and they said, "Okay, now we can do the service." Never ran out of buckets. That was the end of the dream, and I said, "Okay, Lord, what are you saying to me about feeding the river?" And I have a lot of things swirling in my mind about that. That's the way God works with me. I'll chew on the same bone for months. Trying to get all the nutrients out of it. So I think there's several things we feed the river with. But I started searching the scriptures for places where people would put something in the water or the river. And one of the places that really stood out to me was in 2 Kings 2, where Elisha was approached by the prophets at Jericho, one of the schools of the prophets, and asked if he could do anything about the water because the water was bad. Now, the, the, the history, of the, the background for this is, is interesting to me because when Joshua was conquering the promised land, after they destroyed Jericho, he placed a curse on that city. And he said, anybody that tries to rebuild it, you, you pay for the loss of your sons. And, and, then, and nobody can take any of these spoils. It's all got to go to, to the Lord's treasury. Anybody that touches any of its curse. So, so this, this place was, ne was never intended 
to be a city that was rebuilt, but it was rebuilt. But what fascinates me, and the king that rebuilt it did pay for it with the loss of his sons, by the way. But what fascinates me is they rebuilt the city because the land was beautiful and it was a great location, and that's what it says in this passage. It's pleasant, it's good, it's a great location. That word is good, it's the word for, the same word for good, it means precious, it means pleasant, it's the word God used in creation when every day, at the end of the day, he said, this is good. Then at the sixth day, he said, this is very good. It, it also is the word that, that describes the anointing in Psalm 133, how good and pleasant, good, it's the same word good there. And then in the next verse, it says, like the precious oil. So how good and pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. And then it's like the precious oil. Well, precious is the same word. So it's, it's, it's a word in that chapter that describes unity and it describes the anointing. And that's, that's, a, that's a, a message in itself, isn't it? That God uses the same strong word to describe un, unity and anointing. But this is, it's a, it's, a, it's a fascinating study. He says, they said that this, this, this place is good, but the water's bad. And that's a strong word. It's, it's a word that means evil. It's the word in Genesis for the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. You get both words in Genesis, the good and precious and evil, good and evil. Ra is the word. So he said the, 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 this area is good, but the water's bad. Now, for me, it's, it's, it's surprising to me that the prophets decided to put a school there in the first place. Because why would you choose a cursed city to build a school, a school of the prophets? And it's like, well, you know, if I'd have been Elijah, I'd probably say, the, you know, the place is beautiful, but the water is poison. And one of the meanings of the, of the word, it, it causes death. The, the, the word means abortion. It could be translated abortion or barrenness. But the evil is causing abortion. The evil is causing barrenness. And we're not going to be able to stay here. Well, I'd have been saying, well, why'd you build it here in the first place? Don't you, you know it was cursed. But somehow, God didn't, that wasn't, he, that wasn't his attitude. And he obviously had been, he, he had led somebody to do it there. Because he knew he had intentions of healing it and turning this good and precious and beautiful place into something that was no longer filled with death and barrenness and abortion and destruction because he's not into curses, he's into healing. He's into blessing, he's into breaking curses. And even when he asked to judge or curse, he doesn't like to. I'm trying to tell you, he doesn't like to do that. He would much rather forgive and redeem and heal. And heal. So he didn't lead Elisha to do what I thought he would do. Say, well, move the school. You know what Joshua said. He said, well, bring me a jar, a new jar, put salt in it. And that's us. The symbolism of this is profound. The poison water symbolizes the, what happened at the fall when we, the river, we're not the source, but it flows through us, became defiled. And Jehovah Rapha, Rapha had to come and heal the water. So in this passage, the, the prophet said, bring me a jar, put salt in it, and poured it in, and rapha the water. Is the language there. So it became pure or refreshed or sometimes it, but it, it became healed. It became transformed. The death was removed from the water. And then Jesus came along and said, well, you're the salt and you're the vessel. You're my earthen vessel and you're the salt that you're going to preserve and you're going to heal. 
you're gonna you're gonna be the 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 vehicle I use to pour Jehovah Yahweh Rapha into cursed places, cursed people, cursed cities, because it's not the land that's bad. It was the people that defiled the land. So I'll just break that curse off the land and you can use it again. 